Um, I'm having some issues hearing you. Me too. Yeah, I can't hear you, uh, Eva. Can she hear us? I don't know. I don't think so. I think I'll put something in the chat, maybe? Yeah, and that might help. Great. All right, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. What a shitty morning. <laughs> So we want to estimate this average time um, that somebody's on unemployment. So if you guys could write this down and go ahead and give me a thumbs up when you're ready, then I will put you into breakout rooms so you guys can work together. I will also put the, um, the link to the tea table in the chat so you guys can also have that. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Maddie. Thanks, Anna. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys in those breakout rooms. Do, 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 do. Breakout. All right. Give you guys a couple minutes to work on this. Remember to check your answers with each other, and then we'll come on back. Okay. All right. There you go. Miss Ashley, would you please tell me what your group got for X bar? Um, yeah, 22. And for us? Three. And for your standard error? 0 0.3939. Perfect. And what about degrees of freedom? Um, 57. Awesome. And then just one more question. What did you guys get for your T value when you looked at that T table? So we weren't a hundred percent sure, um, but we got 2.01. That is actually perfect. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So if we look at the T table, we get 57. So if we look at 50, so we're going to round down, just be on the safe side. <clears throat> We want to do a 95% confidence interval. So if we look here, we're going to get 
If you use two, that's totally fine. Your answer is going to be so, so close. Okay. All right. Perfect. So while I was creeping in the other rooms, I don't know if you guys saw me in there, but I was, um, everybody got these numbers. So that is perfect. Remember, degrees of freedom is always going to be your sample size minus one. And your standard error is going to be the standard deviation of your sample divided by the square root of your sample size. So now we're going to use all of this to construct our 95% confidence interval and then write an interpretation. So that confidence interval is going to be x bar plus or minus t times our standard error, which is going to be 22 plus or minus that 2.01 times 0 0.3939. So we're going to do the minus first. So we should get about 21.21. 21, and then we should get about 22.79. Just rounding to two decimal places because I'm running out of room on my paper. All right, now we have to write a verbal interpretation. So our verbal interpretation is going to be we're 95% sure the average weeks on unemployment is somewhere between 21.21 to 22.79 weeks. So we only looked at 58 individuals. And what we're doing is that we're trying to make an inference or a prediction about what the average amount of time on unemployment is for the entire population. And what we get is that we think it's probably somewhere between 21 to 22.7 weeks. All right, you guys did a really awesome job. So does anybody have any questions about this? So do we always round down? Cause that was kind of confusing. We used the 60 just cause it was closer to 57. I know you said it doesn't matter, but like why, why do you <clears throat> round down? So you round down so that you get a wider confidence interval so that you're erring more on the safe side. Okay, cool. Okay, good. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, using that T table, it's not, extremely hard but if you want to get a more precise answer you can definitely use technology for this so if you go down to the bottom of unit 7 you can click this confidence interval calculator for proportion and mean and when you do that you're gonna get here now remember you have to change the kind of confidence interval you're looking at so right now it's for proportions so that would be for percentages, which was in unit five. We want the confidence interval for means. And then you're just gonna plug in your data. So our N, which is the size of our sample is 58. Our average was 22. The standard deviation was three, and we want a confidence level of 95. Hitting calculate, it's going to give you that lower bound and upper bound which is exactly what we found because we're amazing. So again, you guys are more than welcome to use this on the homework, on an exam, anything like that. You don't have to do it by hand. If you want to, that's totally fine. Okay, so again, that's at the end of unit seven and there's also a little video there in case um, you forget how to use it. All right. Are you guys cool if we move on to hypothesis tests?
looking good? Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so hypothesis test when you're looking at testing means is going to be almost totally identical to when we were looking at proportions. So we're just going to go ahead and run through an example of looking at hypothesis tests for means. And um, here's our example. The average age of marriage in 1960 was 21. We believe it has increased We interview fifty one people and find an average age of twenty five. with an SD of 2.7 years. So the average age of marriage in 1960 was 21. We think that it's gone up considerably. <clears throat> so what we do is that we interview 51 people and find an average age of 25 with a standard deviation of two points. All right, so here is the first thing that we want to do. We always want to state our null and our alternative hypothesis. And then after that, what we would like to do is we would like to note what our x value is, what our s value is, what our standard error is. and what our mu is, as well as our degrees of freedom. All right, so we always say that the null hypothesis is that whatever parameter we're looking at hasn't changed. So in this case, we assume that the average of our population is still 21. Now our alternative hypothesis is that that has increased. So our alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than 21. Now along with this, I'm also going to draw a picture. Remember the t distribution looks a lot like the normal distribution. It's just a little bit shorter and it has wider tails. But we're still looking for extreme values on this guy. So we're still looking for extreme values over here.
All right. Next thing we want to do is that we want to identify what is X bar, S, the standard error, mu, and our degrees of freedom. So X bar, that's going to be the average of the sample. So when we interviewed 51 people, we found an average age of 25. So that 25 would be our mu. We also found that this sample had a standard deviation of 2.7. Now to find the standard error, we're going to take 2.7 and divide by the square root of 51. So 2.7 divided by the square root of 51. That is going to give us 0 0.3781. mu is going to be 21 and our degrees of freedom is going to be our sample size minus one so it's going to be 50. All right how you guys doing so far? Looking good? Good. Now, usually when we are doing a hypothesis test, when we're looking at proportions, we would find the z-score. Now that we're looking at hypothesis um, test for means, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the t-test. So instead of using the z-score, aka the z-test, we're going to be using the t-test. So here's how you use the t-test. is that it actually looks exactly like the z-score. You're going to take x bar minus mu divided by your standard error. So in our case, that would be 25 minus 21 divided by 0 0.3781. And we're going to get a t test statistic of 81.99. How did you get 81.99 when I put that in my? Uh, oh my gosh. I was just looking at it and I was like, why is that number so crazy? It's because I flip numbers. Thank you so much. I was just staring at it and I'm like, how did this happen? Did you get this, Talia? Yes, I did. Okay, perfect. I was like, that number is ridiculous. All right. So here is how you would use a T table to do this. So I am going to pull up a T table. And what we're going to do is that we're going to look at our, <clears throat> excuse me, our one tail, since we're doing a one tail test. That means that we're only looking at one side. Okay, and we are going to look at our significance level. So usually our significance level is 0 0.05. And we're going to go down and we're going to find approximately our degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom were 50. So I'm going to go ahead and do 40. So remember, I always round down so that I can be a little bit on the safe side. And what I have is a T value of 1.684. Now, my T value is 10.58. What that means is that it's not going to show up on this table, and it's 
way, way bigger than this. So what that means is that I have enough evidence to reject H naught. Now, before we move on, if we continue to look over to this right-hand side, we can see that our p-value here is 0 0.0005. If we look at the degrees of freedom for 40, that would happen if we had a t-score of 3.551. So because our t-value is so big, that means our p-value is probably really close to zero. Now, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but using this table, there's a lot of rounding that can happen. Not only that, um, you're not going to get answers that are very precise. You're kind of working backwards and you're kind of saying like, mm, I think that my p-value is lower than my significance level. So there are two different things that we can do. Okay. The first thing that I suggest that we do is use technology. Now, the reason that I say that we use technology is because the technology uses actual formulas in calculus to give us these numbers. So it's a lot less of a guessing game and it's a lot more exact. So I'll show you how to use that. Again, you're going to go to the bottom of unit seven and you're going to click on hypothesis testing. That's going to pull up this website. Remember, we're not doing proportion testing, so we're not doing percentages, we're doing means, and we're doing a single mean. So we want to click on that, and then we want to change this information. So our null mean is 21, our sample mean was 25, and our sample had a standard deviation of 2.7. and our sample size was 51. We also need to be sure to change the null hypothesis. So we were like, hey, I think that mu is probably bigger than what it used to be. So we're gonna choose this one in the middle. Then we're gonna hit calculate. And what we get is that we get a T-score of 10.58, which is great, that's what we expected. And it also tells us, hey, your probability is less than 0.001%. Just a heads up, if you see this, you can basically say that the p-value is zero. So it's so close to zero that your computer or your calculator won't have enough room for all the zeros that come before the one. So you can just say that your probability is zero. Okay. I just have a quick question. Oh, what website was this again? I can't really... Oh, if you scroll down to the bottom of unit seven, it's going to be underneath the video and it's going to say confidence interval calculator for proportion, or it's the hypothesis testing one. My apologies. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. And the 1.684 would be our p value. So hold up. Burp. That's not the right window. This is right. So our p-value, this is our t-test statistic, and our p-value would be zero. What okay. these numbers on this side are is it's telling you, like, you're going to reject your null hypothesis if your t-score is 1.68 or more, or if your probability is 5% or less. That's what those numbers on the left-hand side are telling you. Uh, can you say that again? Sorry. <clears throat> no, you're good. So what these numbers um, on this side are telling you for the significance level, the 1.68, is it's telling you that your T-score has to be at least 1.68 to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. With a probability of 5%. And then over here, it's telling you, oh my gosh, your T-score is actually 10.58. So let me draw you a picture of what that is, because I think pictures are better. <clears throat> so what those things on the left are telling you
is it's telling you basically like your Z score, if you wanted to reject the null hypothesis, would have to be 1.68 or bigger. Okay. And what that would do is that would make the area in this tail 0 0.05. And then with the right hand side where it says sample mean and it has the 10.58, it's telling you the actual value that you saw in your sample is 10.58. And then the p-value for that is really, really, really small. It's less than 0.001%. Okay. So kind of a blanket statement is ignore the left hand side and only look at the right hand side. All right. All right. Cool. So let's look at another example of running a hypothesis test. There we go. All right. Example. The average amount of food waste is 3.7 pounds a week. We wish to see if advertising against food waste has lowered this average. We randomly select forty two homes. And find an average of 3.2 pounds with an SD <clears throat> of 0 0.8 pounds. <clears throat> All right, so here's what I would like you guys to do is I would like you to write out the null and alternative hypothesis after that I would like you to tell me what mu x bar s standard error 
degrees of freedom. Also your t-tests. by hand, but then after that, I want you to use that online calculator to verify that you found the T statistic correctly, and I want you to use that to find the p-value. <clears throat> All right, so since we only have eight minutes left, I don't want to cut it too close today. So once you um, are done, just give me a little thumbs up and we will um, I'll give you guys like four minutes to do that. That way we have time to talk about it. Hey, Professor, where can we find that uh, tea table? Oh, the one that I showed you guys? Um, it's not going to be very useful because your tea test is going to be off the chart. But I will still put it in the chat for you. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome.
All right. So if you're not done, that's totally okay. I just wanted you guys to get your hands a little dirty and play with this. So the biggest thing we have to make sure is that we set up our null and our alternative hypothesis correctly. So our null hypothesis is that the average amount of food waste hasn't changed, so we assume that it's still 3.7 pounds per week. And our alternative hypothesis is that we hope that this advertising against food waste has lowered it. So we know our mu is 3.7, our sample average is 3.2 with a standard deviation of 0.8, our standard error after we took that 0.8 and divided by the square root of 42 should be 0.1234. And our degrees of freedom are going to be 41. And finally, we find our t-test statistic. It's going to be 3.2 minus 3.7 divided by the 0.1234. And she'll get a test statistic of negative 4.05. All right. So that's all I wanted you guys to do. I didn't want you to actually look at that table because it's going to be off the chart. This number is going to be off the chart, literally. So if we look at using that calculator and we enter the values, so remember, it's going to be 3.7 for the null, 3.2 for the sample. Sample standard deviation was 0.8. Our sample size was 42. And finally, our alternative hypothesis is that we think that the average would be lower. We hit calculate and what we find is we find that our t-score is negative 4.05 so we did everything right and we get a p-value of 0.011 percent which is like silly low so very low so remember if p is low we reject ho meaning that we reject the null hypothesis so we have found evidence that advertising has lowered the amount of food waste on average in the households, which I think if this was a real example would be pretty great. All right, so what we are going to do next time is we're going to look at um, doing hypotheses tests when you have two samples that you're comparing. So you could be comparing the averages between communities, averages between genders, ages, all that good stuff, and we're going to see that it's just like unit six just um, slightly different notation, okay? Other than that, unfortunately, class is over, so I have to say goodbye to you guys once again, but I will see you bright and early tomorrow, okay? Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good day.